Roll call. Liquor Commissioner Byrne. Aye. Deputy Commissioner Cook. Here. Deputy Commissioner Marquardt. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. First item is approval of the April 21st, uh, 2020 Liquor and Licensing Commission minutes. Is there a motion to approve? <clears throat> so made. Motion to approve. Or second. Okay, roll call. <coughs> Liquor Commissioner Byrne. Aye. Deputy Commissioner Cook. Aye. Deputy Commissioner Marquardt. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we only have one item. It's a uh, Rutfee Enterprises, Inc. DBA Vernon Hills uh, Convenience Store, 145 Town Line Road. Uh, request for a Class N liquor license. Is is this the same owner? Uh, I believe that so. It's the same owner, right, of the 7-Eleven? Well, the guy who was the franchisee of the 7-Eleven? Yeah, I think going back, yeah, I think going back in time. I, I think, Mark, you could speak to that, can't you? Or No, Mike Atkinson. Mike, is he? He's right here. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because 7-Eleven closed the stores because it didn't have a gas pump in front of it. Uh, yeah, correct. That's their new policy. If you don't have a gas pump, they won't renew your franchise. So uh, the 7-Eleven is going away. And the franchise owner for 7-Eleven is the same guy that will be the owner for what will be uh, Vernon Convenience Store. Okay, that's what I thought I heard, too. I, I, I don't think so, no. So, he's so it's basically going to be the same operation as what was already in place, the whole license and everything. That's correct. And it's that type N license whereby you can have beer and wine on the shelves, but if you want to sell liquor, it's limited right. in size, it has to be behind right. the counter in a secure right. location and, and so forth. Right. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other comments or questions here? No. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Deputy Commissioner Marquardt. Aye. Deputy Commissioner Cook. Aye. Liquor Commissioner Byrne. Aye. Motion carries. All right. Since there's, I don't think there's any other business that come before the Liquor License uh, Commission. So is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor indicate by aye. 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 The ayes have it. Okay. Meeting's adjourned. Now we got to take a break till we start the board meeting. Where'd I go? Where'd President I go? Byrne. Aye. <laughs> Trustee Cook. Here. Trustee Takaoka. Here. Trustee Brown. Trustee Schultz. Here. Trustee Marquardt. Here. Trustee Oppenheim. Here. Okay, we have a quorum present. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God. Indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, justice, justice for all. Okay. Okay. We welcome all of, uh, to the Village Board, uh, Vernon Hills Virtual Board meeting. Uh, we have gone to this virtual meeting format to maintain social distance and to abide by the statewide stay at home order. Attendees will be able to listen and watch this meeting. Our chat and other features of the Zoom platform are disabled. Uh, attendees have been instructed to provide public comment for this meeting by sending an email to uh, social at vhills.org. All input received by 6.45 p.m. 
will be shared with the board during the public comment portion of tonight's meeting. Input provided after 6.45 will be shared with the board after the conclusion of the meeting. As with all village uh, meetings, a copy of this virtual meeting will be posted on the village YouTube channel. Thank you for your interest and participation. Okay. Well, any starter, any citizens that sent in emails and wish to address the board? No, sir. There has been no communication from anyone outside the village hall. Okay. Well, the first order of business. Mr. President? Uh, yes. Mr. President, if you don't, if, if I could, I'd like to interrupt for just a second here. Yeah. Um, you'll probably notice, I can't tell where he is on your screen, but he's two blocks below me on, on my Zoom screen. Um, a bearded gentleman. Uh, I wanted to introduce Kyle Craddy. Kyle Craddy is the new chief financial officer appointed by Lauterbach and Amon to oversee the finance department here in the village of Vernon Hills. He is an additional staff member that is being appointed to help oversee us um, and see us into the future, our visionary, if you will. Um, and I'd like to let him have a minute or two just to introduce himself to the members of the board. Okay. Uh you know, I, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, you know, just a little bit on my background. Um, I have a bachelor's degree from uh, St. Ambrose University in Davenport, Iowa in economics and finance. And I have a master's degree in uh, public administration from NIU. Um, I've spent the last uh, 10 years with the Park District of Oak Park. Um, kind of went up the ranks from being um, an accounting supervisor up to being the director of finance for the last uh, seven years. Um, through that, I have experience obviously overseeing uh, payroll, uh, information technology, budget preparation, audit preparation, TIF creation, um, and a lot of other different areas. And so I've now moved over to Lauterbach and Amon to um, work here um, for Vernon Hills. Um, you know, like I said, I'm excited to be here. Um, it's day one for me. And so I'm still obviously learning a lot of what's going on here. And I look forward to working with all of you. Um, the last piece I will add is I know um, that you're in some of the, the paychecks that you did receive, there was um, a difference from last year. That wasn't how our software was set up. And so we will be correcting that um, in the coming week. Um, so you will be getting the difference. Uh, the system was set up on a biweekly payroll basis for you guys instead of on a yearly pay on a yearly basis. So it did do the taxes incorrectly. So we will be correcting that for you. Um, uh, ASAP. Okay. Well, welcome. And uh, go oh, ahead. God. Yeah, welcome, Kyle. Well, thank, thank you. you. Welcome, Kyle. Okay. We got a. We got a vote on this one. No, sir. He's uh, he's an appointee from Lauterbach and Amon, okay. and he's here to help oversee. Oh, that's right. That's if we go out and hire a full-time finance director. Is that accurate, uh, Trustee Schultz? <laughs> that would be the case. Yeah. He's out, he's outsourced. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> no problem with outsourcing. No. Just think that the appointed official uh, who holds the title of the finance director or treasurer or whatever should be an employee. Mm -hmm. Just like you were at well, all those right. other places before you went to uh, Lauterbach and Amon, Kyle. <laughs> well, we'll cross that bridge at a future date. All right. First uh, I, a proclamation is Teacher Appreciation Week, May 4th through May 8th. Uh, teachers make schools great. Teachers work to open students' minds uh, to ideas, knowledge, and dreams. Teachers keep America democracy alive by laying the foundation for good citizenship. Teachers fill many roles as listeners, explorers, role models, motivators, and mentors. Teachers continue to influence, influence us long after our school days uh, are only memories. Teachers continue to influence uh, long after our school days. Well, I already, is that a double? <laughs> I guess we got that in there twice. Uh, I Now I, Roger Byrne, Village President, proclaimed uh, today, today National Teacher Day and the period of uh, May 4th through May 8th 
as National Teacher Week in Vernon Hills. Okay. Any comments on that one? Are we yeah, oh, I just like to say it's 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 been interesting since the schools have been closing that some of the comments I've been hearing that they're they're doing an outstanding job of of e-learning and and constantly working with the kids on a daily basis. I think some parents have really I've heard from several people who said they really wish we'd go back to a different math because Common Core is a little difficult when you haven't learned it that way. Um, <laughs> but but um, yeah, I've, I've heard nothing but great stuff about what the teachers have been doing through all of this. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. So uh, we're going to send copies of this to all five high schools and the four, I guess it is, elementary schools. We can certainly. Yeah. We have five high schools. Yeah. Well, are you counting Carmel? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, next is. Uh, Village President's Proclamation, Nas National Police Week, Peace Officers, Officers Memorial Day. The Congress and the President of the United States have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day. In the week in which it falls as Police Week, the members of the Law Enforcement Agency of Vernon Hills play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of Vernon Hills. It is important that all citizens uh, know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of uh, their law, law enforcement agency. And that members of our police department recognize their duty to serve uh, the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and uh, disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. The men and women of the Vernon Hills Police Department unceasingly provide a vital public service. Now, therefore, I, Roger L. Byrne, President of the Village of Vernon Hills, call upon all citizens of Vernon Hills and upon all patriotic, civic, and educational organizations to observe the week of May 10th to the 16th, 2020 as Police Week with appropriate ceremonies and observations in which all of our people may join in commemorating police officers past and present who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service uh, to their communities and in doing so have established for themselves an enviable and enduring reputation for pres uh, preserving the rights and security of all citizens. I further call upon all citizens of Vernon Hills to observe Friday, May 15, 2020 as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those peace officers who through their courageous deeds have made the ultimate sacrifice and service to their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty. And let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of our fallen heroes. In witness thereof, I have hereto set my hand and caused the seal of the village of Vernon Hills to be affixed this day, May 5th, May 5th 2020. Chief, Pat, you guys want to say something for being truly appreciated? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to uh, just uh, accept that on behalf of the uh, entire police department, the men and women that uh, you see out on the streets and uh, don't want uh, to, to overlook our uh, detectives, our communication officers, our community service officers, uh, the fine men and women that work behind the scenes in administrative roles in um, support and analyst roles. We couldn't do our job without them. And it, it, it really is uh, wonderful to work in a community with such a strong partnership and so much support uh, from the public and our other, uh, our other institutions. So it, it, it really is in uh, challenging times uh, quite rewarding to um, to serve in such a great community. And I will uh, share the proclamation uh, with the entire staff. Thank you. Okay, Chief, you're welcome. Okay, uh, Ms. Patrick uh, Zimmerman, do you, uh, Deputy Chief, want to say anything? I'll just echo what the Chief said. I mean, this we have an outstanding police department. Uh, 
the men and women do a, a great job for the community, but uh, it goes both ways. We appreciate your support and the board support, the community support and all our partners. We couldn't do it without them. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Public Works Week proclamation. Public works uh, services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives. The support of an outstanding and informed citizenry is vital to the deficient operation of public works systems and programs, such as water, sewers, streets, highways, public buildings, solid waste collection, and snow removal. The quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction is ver vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials. The efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now, therefore, I, Roger uh, Byrne, president of the Village of Vernon Hills, do, do hereby proclaim the week of May 17th through May 23rd, 2020, as National Public Works Week in the Village of Vernon Hills. And I call upon all citizens and civic operations to acquaint themselves with the problems involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Okay, is Dave there? Dave is here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the board recognizing uh, public works for that week. Uh, it's been interesting with uh, coronavirus and what impact it's had on people's lives. Uh, very pleased as far as some of the essential duties that we have to provide services for our residents, uh, very important, uh, whether it's water, sewer, uh, the roadways, people walking along the paths, uh, enjoying the, uh, the, the lakes and the open space that Vernon Hills has to offer, uh, and just really appreciate the support, not only from the, the board, but uh, residents are extremely helpful to us too. They're our eyes and ears. They point out things, uh, especially more recently since they've been out, um, pointing out just things that are important to them. So uh, just appreciate everyone's support and recognizing us. Okay, thank you. And thank you, the men and women of the Public Works Department. Will do. Okay, uh, next is the omnibus vote agenda. Is there a motion to approve A through M? So made. Uh, can I make a, uh, in fact, a question on E, G, and H on Advanced Business Network? Uh, I question be for it's uh, basically about $200,000 worth separated. And on H, we have a phase one, which means. There's another phase to it, which is probably another $48,000. So I just want to pull it just to go over for my understanding. Okay. All right. Well, we'll the first concurs. And it's the first and second? Uh, second. Okay. So we need a, um, a motion to prove items A, B, C, D, F, I, J K L M. Is there a motion to approve? Yes, there is. Second. Second. Okay. We'll roll call on that. President Byrne. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Aye. Cook. Aye. Motion carried. All right, item E. Uh, this is the approval and passage of ordinance 2020-063, uh, an ordinance authorizing approval and payment to advanced business networks, uh, Inc. for additional information technology support for fiscal year 2020-21 20, for an amount not to exceed $120,000. $120, and 
Jan, are, do you want to speak to this one? I am here, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Village Board. Uh, e is uh, replenishing the hours that the previous uh, employee who served in GIS and IT support uh, used to cover for us. As you'll recall, last year, that employee resigned to take a similar position in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, it caught us a little bit off guard as that employee was the in-house IT support when he wasn't doing GIS services. So the ordinance uh, gives us hours from our IT service provider to supplement the village hall with infrastructure uh, development, which will lead into the which will lead into some of the other ordinances I'll talk about next. But there was there was hours on site, so it was almost like a rolling 40 hour a week on site IT support that walked out the door when that employee resigned. Uh, we did a study and looking at hours uh, when you add benefits in and the pension costs, we believed it was more efficient to go uh, with our IT provider to supplement the services needed. Okay. Is there any questions or comments on it? Motion to approve. No. Motion to approve, is there a second? Second. I'll second it. Okay, roll call. President Byrne. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Cook. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, G. Okay, on, on G, uh, the ordinance authorizes the expenditures for a five year annual licensing support agreement for uh, VMware in the amount not to exceed $36,500. Uh, so I'll be the first to say I'm not an IT expert and I had a feeling this was gonna come up. So I asked the IT staff uh, to prepare a, a brief comment for me to share with that. And John, that John um, on G is the other advanced business networks one for the SAN. The story yep, I was gonna get to that one. I didn't, it, was, F, was F pulled as well or, or no? F, F was approved, G wasn't. Um, okay, I thought all three were. He is the storage area network, which is um, computer lingo for you know yep. servers and the the, the yep. IT thirty thousand. Okay, right. I apologize. I'll pick it up. I thought uh, in my transport over to this uh, room, I thought that all three were pulled. Uh, <clears throat> clo closing up on F, that was a licensing agreement to support our uh, VMware G is an ordinance. 2020-65 in the amount not to exceed $30 or $30,000 uh, to advance business networks uh, for our village hall storage area network. So it's called a SAN and this is an upgrade that's going to allow us uh, to provide data for our new software systems and upgrades known as MUNIS, which are going to allow us to uh, do additional work to include our community development, being able to deploy the inspectors in the field with tablets and that upgrade will allow them to communicate, hopefully paperlessly, uh, back to the village hall where processing can occur. So the, the storage area networks are basically uh, such electronic storage bins that allow for additional software upgrades. Our current uh, SANs are nearing end of life and we were advised by our provider if there's to be any software upgrades for anything, including the software that LNA implements or uses here or any additional services that we'd like to enhance, we have to have newer storage area networks or SANs. This is a, uh, an agreement for our IT service provider, ABN, to make these purchases and upgrade. This is phase one, and, and as you can tell, if there's a phase one, it, uh, there will be a phase two and phase three next year as we uh, increase our capabilities here. So are there any comments or questions on item G? Motion to approve. Second it. Motion is second. Roll call, please. President Byrne. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Cook. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, next item on is it was pulled as H. 
approval and pass of the ordinance 2020-066, an ordinance authorizing approval of payment to advance business networks for information technology support for fiscal year 2020 to 2021 in, a, in an amount not to exceed $48,000. <clears throat> Yes, sir. So as, as we discussed uh, the outsourcing of the previous in-house uh, component, which was GIS and IT support, uh, prior to that, for our IT, for the majority of our IT work, we use a consultant, uh, ABN, to provide us hours. The arrangement the village has is to purchase the hours in advance uh, in a coordinated deployment for our normal maintenance. Uh, as, you may have, uh, as you may recall, earlier this year, uh, we were we were hit with a virus, and one of the benefits to having the hours prepaid is we don't need to make calls to uh, have people come in. the The system is monitored by ABN. The system is maintained by ABN, and as you can see by uh, the prices, uh, it is it is more beneficial. It is beneficial for the village uh, to purchase the hours in a coordinated block versus having to use emergency hours or in-house IT personnel to not only maintain the systems but respond when there are uh, attacks on the village network. So this is one of the, the prepaid payments. Uh, you will see others throughout the year. There are emergency hours that we buy, and there are also hours for the communication center that are built out separately. This is a block specifically for the maintenance, the maintenance of our networks uh, here at the village hall in the amount of not to exceed $48,000. Is there a motion to approve? So may. Second. Who's the second? Mike. I am second. Okay. Michael. Roll call. President Byrne. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Cook. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Under uh, unfinished business budget update, uh, and then executive board would declare declaration uh, 2006. But the budget update is rather important to say to me. Um, Mr. President, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll jump out of out of order here just because it's a little bit easier. The executive order as we have done uh, every board meeting since March 20, March 16th. This is an extension of the executive order, the declaration of an emergency done by the president back in March that just allows us to continue to function in emergency capacity. Uh, the president will be signing that tonight. There's no board action necessary. And this allows the emergency order to stay in place until our next regularly scheduled board meeting, which would be May 19th. Okay. And then I'll, if it's okay, I'll just move directly into the uh, budget yeah. discussion. But no time like the present. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, this is a follow up to the discussion we had on April 2nd. If you recall, the village board meeting staff presented some suggestions on ways to potentially reduce budget extent expenditures for the 2021 uh, or fiscal year. After some discussion, the board asked staff to develop a prioritized list of potential budget cuts for the board's consideration. Staff uh, has worked very hard together with an effort to identify as many potential budget reductions as possible, while still continuing to provide the same high level of service that, to the community that they have come to appreciate. In response to your request, staff has submitted uh, the Excel spreadsheet, which I believe you received yesterday for your review and consideration. Budget items on the list are prioritized as an A, a B, or a C. Staff would propose that all the items with an A be deferred or eliminated from the budget until such time as um, the economy recovers and we may get to some semblance of, of uh, the new normal, which would probably be sometime, who knows? I'm not even gonna guess. Um, the elimination or, uh, or implementation of all of the items labeled as a priority A would result in a savings of roughly $2.5 million across all funds. 
Now there's only a couple of items with uh, a rating, a priority rating of B, totaling about $300,000. But one of those is the road rehab project and that's gonna require some immediate input on part of the village board. Currently we anticipate the motor fuel tax that generates somewhere around $600,000 and that is taking into account uh, the loss of fuel tax um, that is occurring as we speak. As part of the village, village's road rehab project, the village had budgeted about a million dollars to significantly enhance the uh, amount of roadway in the village that would be addressed this season. This is curb, sidewalks, gutters, and repaving uh, where necessary. If the board felt it appropriate, the village could eliminate uh, the section of Westmoreland Drive between Route 83 and Lakeside Drive from the 2020 road rehab project, saving an additional $200,000. This decision would need to be made virtually immediately, like tonight, as paving work in the village has already started, and we would need to notify the paving contractor before any work begins on Westmoreland. Uh, Dave Brown can fill in any of the details uh, on this. Yeah, Dave, how, um, right. if I can interrupt, how, how important, I mean, is that a section of road that can go another year or is that, I haven't driven down that in a while, is it pretty bad or? Um, it, it, uh, it is showing signs and uh, we think it should be repaired. Uh, let me, let me uh, give a more global uh, discussion on the, the road program. Um, we did a pavement management study. It showed that uh, we would be uh, in need of about 1.2 million on asphalt alone. Um, but we usually do other things. We do curbs, sidewalks. Uh, so there's, we really look for 1.4 million a year. We did drop this program for this year down to a million already. Uh, we are allowed by contract and IDOT uh, rules to cut a program after its bid by uh, up to 25%. This would be a reduction uh, that would be within that tolerance. In terms of uh, the bigger picture, my largest concern with the road program is more uh, in the long term. Uh, we have a number of roads that were all built as part of the Greg's Landing development. Those roadways started being put in in the 1998, 1999, um, and we will have a number of roads that are all uh, needing to be addressed around the same time. Um, I'm already seeing on Greg's Parkway that there are, there's some needs for patching. We're continuing to do that. Um, it is money that we will have to spend at some time. The larger picture of my, uh, and my concern is if we don't keep up with our road program, we will be up in Greg's Landing and we will start heading towards not a 25 year program, but return back to where we were two or three years ago. And uh, we may not get up into completing those roadways at a reasonable time. And then it starts costing us more money because we are uh, getting into more patching and potentially reconstruction if you don't do that. So um, my recommendation is that we do still continue with it. I understand what where we're at right now. Um, the board's being faced with a lot of challenges. So if we had to remove it, it's certainly acceptable. It just means that we have to make it up uh, in future years. I have a question. How heavily traveled is that stretch? Uh, Westmoreland. Um, so a lot of people uh, coming uh, from the south uh, right. into our village on Westmoreland. I know uh, village manager uh, does that. Uh, so Westmoreland is a gateway through the village. Uh, it also goes through some uh, questionable uh, soil conditions that are under those roadways. There's uh, wetlands and uh, poor soils on either side. So the roadways uh, kind of reflecting uh, that soil type. So if you drive it, you, you will see the, the condition of the road. It is showing its wear. Um, that's my thoughts. It's not as busy as um, Deer Path, but right. it's probably a, a reasonably close second. Anybody who lives in Hawthorne Club uh, takes Westmoreland to get to southbound 83. 
and you also wind up picking up traffic, probably all the traffic coming out of Indian Creek right. uh, that needs to go southbound on 83. I know I take it on a very, very regular basis. Okay. I mean, the mild winters help, right? As far as wear and tear on these roads. Yeah, the, the road, I mean, you know, from the casual observer, it it's, doesn't seem to be in distress. Um, but again, you know, while we're, we're in a 30 year cycle right now with Hawthorne Club and Cherry Valley, right, Dave? Because I mean, that was 90, 90 was uh, the, the top course was placed in Hawthorne Club. And we started replacing it last year and we'll finish this year. So we're basically on a 30 year program in that area anyway. When was the last time Westmoreland was repaid? Uh, Westmoreland uh, depends which stretch I believe it was. Um, some areas were 1995 and some were 2003. Um, and, and again, in terms of whether we include a $200,000 stretch or not, that's not a make or uh, break deal for me. It's really looking towards our long-term budget and the ability to address uh, other roads in the future. And you know, so that, that's really what my thoughts are. Yeah, well, there needs to be a, a change at the state level regarding MFT because uh, uh, we can't keep going on on a dollars per, or, yeah, pennies per gallon basis. It needs to be on a percentage basis. I, I mean, right now I've gotten eight weeks to the quarter tank. It's been, no, 10 weeks. I've used a quarter tank of gas over the last 10 weeks. So. And, well, and really yeah. hitting on what, uh, what you mentioned, uh, we're also moving in a world where we have more electric cars too. So uh, I agree there needs to be a, a better funding mechanism. So you're recommending we fund this, Dave, correct? That, that is my recommendation. Okay. But I, you know, I'm not falling on the sword of it, but that is my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the only reason the only reason I brought this up is if we needed to save every dollar, this would sure. be one way of doing it. I, I agree with Dave that road is in pretty rough shape. Okay. And not only does it provide a feeder route for all the traffic that Trustee Schultz mentioned, but you have Lakeside Drive, you have Court of Spruce, Court of Birds, all the apartment buildings and the school right. buses that travel down that road every day. Okay. But are we talking about moving this to next year or? Uh, I mean, that would, that be if, if, we would, if, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, so in, in next year, we're hoping to do the Lakeview uh, project. And I think uh, Marco and I will have some more discussions on that. It would be pushed off uh, two years. Mm. So it would leapfrog yeah, I, Lakeview federal job. Then I think we should just go ahead and go with it. Okay. That's fine. We'll, we certainly can make that happen, or we'll just make it happen. Um, as Dave was just starting to allude to, there's only one item. It's actually three lines on the spreadsheet with a priority code of C. And those are the ones we really shouldn't touch if we, if we can possibly help it. This is the Lakeview Fairway and Route 60 project, which is budgeted at $1.62 million. Now this project is being funded through an 80% match from the government. If the village does not fund this project this year, there's a possibly possibility of losing grant funding for this project entirely. Now on the, on the plus side, if you wanna look at it that way, there's also a possibility that due to the state financial and the, and the federal government's financial situation with, with all that's happening in the world right now, this project may get pushed down the road by another year. If this project gets pushed down the road another year, then we would be able to free up the funds we have budgeted in this year for uh, general operating expenses. Again, Dave can explain the, uh, the funding mechanism for this. And I know he's had some uh, pre-construction meetings with the, the representatives from the state on this uh, as late as I think last week. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mark. 
So in terms of this project, where, where are we at? Um, we are going through phase two. We just had the kickoff meeting. That's when they prepare plans and uh, prepare things for bidding. Um, they're starting to uh, have discussions in terms of acquiring some land around there. Uh, with Mike Atkinson's help and uh, our attorney's help, we've been able to work through some discussions of acquiring many of those parcels already, whether it's the park district's uh, uh, property at the northwest corner of Hawthorne and Lakeview, whether it's uh, discussions with the uh, Hawthorne Village Commons ownership that uh, dedicated land uh, right of way and easements to us, or whether it's Bears Fit who has cooperated with uh, some temporary easements. We have a number of parties that have worked uh, with us on it, and that's helping reduce some costs. Where we really are is uh, next year it is slated. There's a number of other, uh, other projects that are competing that are in this year's uh, program that might not be ready and they may bump up against ours and that may push us out one more year. Um, there's a silver lining in that, but we wanna be prepared. Ultimately where we're at in the long uh, duration of the project is we're pretty much at the uh, two yard line. And if we cross the goal line, we will receive uh, federal construction dollars of 3.7 million. They'll pay another uh, third of a million dollars for uh, construction inspection. So we're just about to get a little over $4.1 million if we move forward. And that's really the 80% match that uh, Mark had alluded to. So I guess my, my, my strong recommendation is this would not be the project to cut. Yeah, to cut because, well, this one we've been working on for how many years? Uh, this was a offshoot of the extension of fairway drive through the uh, VHAC all the way from 45 to 60 and it's an extension of that project. So. Uh, decades. <laughs> yeah, many moons. Uh, okay. Uh, does anybody get, have any comments or questions on this one? Not on that particular item, but I do have some questions on some of the other line items. The fire oh. away. Well, I, uh, go ahead. Uh, on four different or three different lines, account two one zero three zero three zero. We have police purchase of vehicles, build out two less, police purchase of vehicles, will not purchase any vehicles, and then police purchase of vehicles, not purchase for police vehicles. And I'm trying to figure out how that 152,000, uh, which shows in two places, and then the 20,000, how that all works. You follow where I'm at there, Mark? You're muted, Mark. Mark, you got to unmute. I, I, I was unmuted and I muted myself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I asked that same question of Ed. He said, essentially, that is a, um, that's an audit um, accounting thing. It's the, the way they do it, it's like counted twice because there's money that goes into the fund from the replacement fund, and then there's money that's actually expended for the vehicles. He said, technically speaking, it is the same 152,000, probably should be counted only once, um, but that's how, it, that's how it works. Because we, uh, have, mon we have money that- I guess as a reduction, it is only counted once. Right, he, he left it in there and counted as a reduction once. Essentially what it is, is we would buy the vehicles out of the operating fund, and if we don't, so that would be an expenditure. And then if we had to put money into the vehicle replacement fund, which is sort of how it works, mm -hmm. it would be another expenditure, but it's the same money. Okay. It's an audit, it's an audit trail thing for finance. All right. And then uh, the other uh, kind of question uh, was, uh, I just noticed that um, Libertyville uh, canceled today their their equivalent of summer celebration, along with all their uh, 
uh, band activities. Uh, so uh, we've got a line up at, uh, the second line, which is 4th of July slash pageant slash fireworks. And then of course under uh, B, we've got summer celebration. Uh, is staff ready to make a recommendation on uh, those? Unfortunately, um, at this point, based on the announcement by the governor this afternoon, who has said as far as he's concerned, there will be no gatherings of people greater than 10 until a vaccine has been developed. Right. Pretty much leaves uh, the decision-making ability out of our hands. Um, earlier today, Buffalo Grove and Libertyville have both uh, canceled all of their events through the summer. And this was part of the discussion that was gonna take place right after I finished my little narrative here. I uh, was wow. talk about the, the summer events. Right now, we're canceling the Arbor Theater Summer Concert Series, which was due to begin like in two weeks. Um, we're talking about the 4th of July Parade, the 4th of July Fireworks and Summer Celebration. Those three events right there would save the village roughly $200,000. Um, but I understand the importance to the community. Um, I, think, I don't think we've ever missed one of these events. Uh, and I know it'd be a very difficult decision for the board to make, but I think in light of uh, the warnings given to us by the governor, um, I'm not sure we have a choice. I'd like to make a comment on that. I think based upon the fact that we're in the Northeast subregion, which is Cook County and includes Chicago, there's no way. Because I actually, when I saw that email, I, I emailed Representative Dietich, like if, you know, if regions within like Vernon Hills, Lake County within our subregion of the Northeast, can we open, can we reopen some stuff versus say parts of Cook County said, no, the whole region's going together. Meaning, Unless if Chicago's not opening Cook County, then we're not we're not going to be able to do it. So let's let's assume that large gatherings like the summer sun Fourth of July right. foregone conclusion will not happen. And based upon that map, if you notice that yeah. the uh, northeast region is subdivided into four or five other regions, I believe we're in region eleven, right, which includes Lake and McHenry County. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this through my glass half full. Um, optimistic viewpoint and say that they're since they labeled them that way there's always the possibility that we may be able to be treated differently at some point in the future it's not going to be before May 29th that's for sure yeah that was sort of my question to Dietrich and he said no it's everyone's going together in the whole Northeast region so because I you know I was I was specific I could could Lake County open before say cook and he says no but he asked I guess the state told him at least today well, Mary Ann Ahern, goes hand in hand. The yeah, Mary Ann Ahern from Channel Five asked the question directly. Really? Uh, okay. So uh, McHenry County is on the border between Zone One and Zone Two. Right. So, is there any chance McHenry County could in, open up along with Zone Two? Right. And basically, it was a flat no. Right. Okay. He said subregions are, are what is used by IEMA for other purposes, but for purpose of reopening the state, all counties in the Northeast region will open uniformly. So that tells me if Chicago's not doing anything, we certainly aren't. And I, I don't get that because, you know, our schools could potentially open versus say Chicago public, but you know, I'm not. The I governor. agree. To uh, clarify, uh, I'm sorry, Mark, to clarify your earlier point, um, it was category four doesn't require a vaccine and that allows for 50 people, not, not the 10. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Right. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm holding out hope for is I'm not requesting to cancel Oktoberfest because we're talking about something that's late September, possibly October. We don't know. And I'm kind of, again, holding out hope that maybe we might be able to if things clear up a little bit, we might be able to have some type of an event. Uh, the park district is interested in, they're, they're gonna be canceling Rib Fest. Uh, I was told that if the village cancels their events, obviously they're gonna cancel theirs. So they would be interested in doing something with us, partnering with us, should we have the ability to do some type of uh, an event for Oktoberfest. 
the, the good news is there was some, and I forgot where the uh, uh, where it was ongoing, but someone's taken a new approach towards a vaccine uh, using the RNA to, uh, as opposed to a, uh, a dead virus or whatever. Um, and they were talking about potential mass usage in September, which might lead to maybe by Christmas, we'd have enough people vaccinated. I'd say that's so wishful thinking. Yeah. So that is the proposal for the budget. I guess there's no there's no need to vote on this. Um, my suggestion would be is, is we're just going to go ahead and implement as many of these things as we, well. All the items that marked as item A, um, we're just going to go ahead and implement those. We're just not going to make those purchases or those expenditures. Should something turn around miraculously before the end of the next fiscal year, we can always come back and revisit that. Otherwise, um, we'll address this as we start to put our budgets together in November, December of this current year. So basically what we're saying is that uh, we're looking to eliminate uh, $2.5 million uh, from the budget. Correct. And as a result of that, we are officially declaring that there will not be a Vernon Hills uh, pageant there will not be a 4th of July parade. There will not be a 4th of July fireworks display and there will not be summer celebration. Is there a concurrence from the board on that? Yeah. The, yes, it should it be, yes. Yeah, unfortunately, it yes. Can we in fact vote on it? You don't, you don't have, the item is not specifically uh, laid out on the agenda in order to, to take action. At this point. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's the intent of the board at the next regular scheduled meeting to officially, but the consensus of the board is such at this juncture, or what I stated before is a truism. Yes, we can do that. Yeah, I mean, as far as voting on it at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if you want to take if you want to take an official action to vote to eliminate those events, that's fine. We'll, we'll have that prepared. Yeah. All right. What else do we got to discuss on the budget itself? You know, before we move away from this, I I don't want to leave everyone with the impression that the future is bleak. Although it certainly doesn't look very good today, um, there is reason for optimism. Unlike the recession 10 years ago, there's plenty of developments, buildings, and projects that are still underway or in the planning stages with construction soon to follow. You know, we've got the, the waterway car wash, which is the former Peacock. Uh, they're doing a whole re redesign and uh, renovation of the project. Uh, we got the Carson's demolition permit has already been submitted. It is in the review process, and I'm gonna talk more about that in just a minute. We got Slice Pizza is nearing completion in Melody Farms. Um, they're planning to be open for business on June 1st. Panda Express is finishing, uh, is in the finishing stages of their facility on Route 60, and that should be opening soon for drive throughs West Elm Furniture is nearing completion of their new store in the Melody Farm development. Buttermilk Breakfast Restaurant, again, the same thing. They're moving along and receiving their final inspections uh, in Melody Farms. They're planning on opening soon. Uh, residential single family building permit applications this year have exceeded the number of permit requests for the same time period last year, even with all the, uh, the COVID um, stuff going on. The Philharmonic Building has received concept approval and is heading to, the, is heading to technical review. Baxter Credit Union has received Village Board approval and be submitting their permit application within the next 30 days. Panatoni Development appeared, it will be appearing before the Planning and Zoning Commission in early June to receive approval for 900,000 square feet of light industrial buildings on the uh, former Darling Farm property. Plans for the redevelopment of Hawthorne Mall are moving forward quickly. Again, I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. 
Uh, the village has received uh, two new development proposals for retail stores at the shops of Greg's Landing and a new developer for the property at 888 Forest Edge Drive will be appearing before the Committee of the Whole very shortly for concept approval and teardown of the current building and the construction of another 70,000 square foot light industrial building. So even though, unfortunately, even though the, the, uh, the retail portion of our economy is, is not looking very good at this point, there's reason to be optimistic. People are still building, Steeple, people still want to come to Vernon Hills, and people are still investing in this community. So I don't think anyone should lose hope um, for the future. I'm off the soapbox now. We're very fortunate, no question. Okay, well, I do, Mr. President, if you don't mind, I do have one more thing that I think everyone would be interested in. Uh, one of the questions that, that everyone, everyone, a number of trustees have called me or people have asked me recently is, uh, what's happening at the mall? Have we heard anything from Centennial? Uh, are they still moving forward as the project dead? So I thought tonight we're talking about budgets and we're talking about, you know, all the negative stuff going on. I thought maybe I'd take a, two minutes of your time and explain what's going on at the mall. No, the mall is not dead. On the contrary, for a project of this size and complexity, it's actually moving forward at light speed. Last fall, Centennial submitted their proposal for roughly a $250 million mixed use development and requested Village uh, create a TIF district to assist with the cost of the project. The Village hired an independent consultant to review the TIF request and to assess whether the amount of the TIF was reasonable. Last Friday, the village submitted our response to the developer and we're waiting to hear back from them to begin uh, negotiations in earnest. In the meantime, the developer has proposed a very uh, aggressive project schedule. Beginning next week, the developer will begin staging construction materials on the mall property on the Carson site and begin erecting construction fencing. Demolition of the Carson's building is scheduled to begin on June 1st and is scheduled to take approximately three months. At the same time, the Carson's building is being demolished. Construction work is also scheduled to begin on the portion of, of Ring Road that runs parallel to Milwaukee Avenue from Route 60 to Ring Road just north of the mall. Uh, this road is gonna be straightened to accommodate the three lot subdivision that was approved last year and will be built along Milwaukee Avenue. Construction of a new 70,000 square foot retail store is scheduled to begin roughly September 1st with an anticipated completion date of April 30th, 2021. Simultaneously, the demolition of the Sears project is also scheduled to begin around September 1st, immediately after the finishing of the demolition of the Carson's project. Again, concurrent with the construction of the new retail building, uh, the construction and development of the three lot subdivision is also scheduled to begin. I want to make it very clear that the village has not entered into a redevelopment agreement with the developer and a TIF has not been created or approved. At the last board meeting, the board approved an ordinance creating a TIF registry so that anyone who wanted to be kept up to speed on the status of the project could register and would be notified. More information will be on our website next week. Currently, our consultant is evaluating the feasibility of creating a uh, TIF district at this location, but all the data is not in. Negotiations with the developer are underway, but it's important to note, no redevelopment agreement has been reached, nor have any of the terms surrounding the creation of the TIF. And just to explain a bit further, with all the meetings and public notifications that are legally required for the creation of a TIF, even if everything went exactly as planned, the earliest that the TIF could be created would be mid to late September. I also want to make this perfectly clear. Even though demolition and construction are scheduled to begin next month and people are going to see a lot of work being done, all this work is being done entirely at the risk of the developer. No deal is in place, no money has been promised. They have deadlines that they need to meet and don't wanna risk, lo risk losing the entire 2020 construction season while we're still in negotiations. 
I just thought it was real important to mention that up front and, and publicly because people are going to start seeing fencing going up. They're going to see construction work begin. I don't want anybody to jump to the conclusion that we've, we've made a deal somewhere and all the, the rest of these conversations are for show. That is not the case. But at what point will the public be apprised of some of the some of the if uh, terms? Um, oops, I think I muted myself. I'm I'm going to let Jim speak to that. At what point will the public be involved in any of the TIF hearings? Certainly, uh, that that will happen after the feasibility study is completed. Feasibility study will be completed over the next month to month and a half. Uh, at the same time, we continue to go through negotiation relative to the, uh, the, the term sheet, which relates to the TIF um, ask by the developer and ultimately what we're, we're going to agree on. So public hearings relative to the TIF creation were May or early May. I, I think we'll probably be looking at mid to late June. We'll start to uh, conduct public hearings, maybe even into uh, July. Uh, where the, there will be participation. The, the formation of the TIF still has to be evaluated and that's underway. So I, I think we're probably late June and July is when we'll start to take action here publicly uh, where the public will get involved. So the public doesn't get involved at all in terms of the terms no. uh, of, of the TIF itself of what kind of negotiations no, that's a negotiation between the, the village and the and the developer and ultimately with the taxing bodies. But what will happen, I, I guess to answer your question directly, there will be an RDA, a redevelopment agreement, that's going to come before you that will have those terms in it. You'll have to vote on it publicly. So the public then will be able, they'll, they'll be apprised of the RDA and the terms of the RDA. In fact, the, a copy of the RDA will be available once it's completed before you vote on it. So at that time, the public can appear and speak to the RDA, but up till this, up till that, up till that point, the, the the public would not be involved in the negotiation of the TIF incentive. That's that's a determination for the village board and and the developer ultimately. But there will be a public vote. Actually, uh, Trustee Oppenheim, I think I know where you're going with this, so maybe I can make this clear. Part of the agreement, the redevelopment agreement uh, that we're discussing will also include discussions with the school district, with the park district, with the fire prevention district. So those entities that are directly affected will be brought in and made part of the agreement. It's our hope and our plan that when the redevelopment agreement, um, without sounding too corny, when this agreement comes before the board for formal approval and signature, We'll be standing arm in arm with um, with our with our other members of the community that are affected by this. I don't want anybody to think that again. This is a deal that's done behind closed doors and no one has any input. And I think that's where you were coming from. Yeah, so, that's exactly yeah. where I was coming from. Yeah. I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of that. And just so you know, I have uh, well, we have twice a week meetings with the fire with the fire protection district now, um, but I also talk to the superintendent of district seventy three several times a month and every time anything appears on the board agenda I always give them a call and talk to them and give them a heads up as far as what's coming and what it means so they are in lockstep with us they know it's uh, they know what, what we're doing they know we're moving forward and believe me when I say that when the time's right with the developer part of our dis a discussion with the developers will also be with those other taxing bodies very good thank you Okay. And that's all I have. Well, is there any new business or communication to come before the board? Is there a motion to adjourn? So made. Second. So, motion is second. Roll call, please. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Marquart? Trustee Marquart. Sorry, I had it muted. Aye. Trustee Takaoka? Aye. Trustee Schultz? 
Aye. President Byrne? Aye. Motion carries. I'd like to call the committee to hold meeting to order. Uh, first item is the uh, approval of the committee to hold meeting minutes of April 21st, 2020. Any comments, corrections, deletions, et cetera? Motion, motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion is second. Okay, Who was the second, please? I was. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, Dave. Well, I, um, I would have said Carrie. I, mean, I know. Oh, wow. Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> okay. Trustee Cook. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Aye. Trustee Marquart. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. President Byrne. Aye. Okay, motion carries. All right, the only item on here is a request for an outdoor dining and seating establishment permit for Invicto, uh, located at uh, 887 North Milwaukee Avenue in Melody Farms. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, uh, the request tonight would include five tables with a seating capacity of 12 customers uh, that would be located on the sidewalk in front of the restaurant that would be on the east side of the building. Uh, Mike, if you can go to the next screen. And uh, as you can see on the drawing in front of you, a fence would be located around the perimeter uh, that would separate the public from customers who may be consuming alcohol. There would also be a self-closing, self-latching gate uh, that would be provided. Uh, the dining area is located in excess of six feet from the curb line in compliance with those requirements. And there would be a five and a half foot clear walking path that would be maintained between the building and the dining area. So if the cow feels that the outdoor dining request is appropriate, staff should be directed to prepare a resolution approving the outdoor dining license subject to the conditions that are outlined in your packet. And we should have the applicant here to answer any questions that you may have. Any comments or questions on this one? Looks like a great idea to me. Yeah, the uh, sidewalk is, at, there's a couple places where it says uh, existing concrete is going to remain that, that. In other words, that's the five feet, what is it, five feet seven or something like that, five feet six inches. That's all sidewalk? Yeah, that's all sidewalk. It's five feet five and seven eighths inches. Okay. It's all sidewalk and that's measured to that architectural feature that kind of juts out from the face of the building, but it's all okay. sidewalk. Okay. Thank so you. it's in between the building itself and the seating area. There'll be the right. sidewalk. That's the only one of its kind that we have like that, right? Everything else is up against the building. Uh, that's be the, yeah, that's the only one in uh, Melody Farm that we have this way. And Mike, if you can go to that previous screen. You know, as you can see, the way that sidewalk is set up on that middle picture, uh, there's the landscape island and then the sidewalk, and then there's that indentation into the landscape area, and it just lends itself to a perfect location for the outdoor dining area. It's, it's just unique for this particular location. Yeah, I think it's, it, it appears to be better off for the overall use of the sidewalk. Yeah, I, right. I, I, I don't disagree with that, but I do have a problem with uh, the having alcohol service out there without it being, you know, kind of contained to the building. Um, I find that problematic. I, I have no problem with the concept of the outdoor dining area, but I do have a problem with them allowing alcohol service out there. Um, well, it will have a fence around it. That's yeah, correct. but the fact, it's, it's independent. It, there's no connection to the building where you kind of have to go into the building to go into the gated area. It's out there on its lonesome. It's well, the first I, time we've ever done anything like this. Jim, I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I apologize. I mean, I had a 
agree, but that's, I don't think that's really an area where you're going to have someone sitting there for two and a half hours drinking and eating. It's not like you're in the city where, you know, that's very commonplace. People want to sit outside, eat, they hang out for a couple hours, they eat and they drink. I don't think this is lending itself to that type of environment. I get what you're saying, but I can't imagine someone spending more than half 45 minutes having their meal and leaving. Well, it's going to have uh, wait staff service, right? That's that's correct. Right. And it's not, like I said, you know, as an eating area, it, if somebody wanted to take their own stuff outside, I got no problem with mm. that. But right. I just, it this will be the first one where we haven't really instituted a set of controls where you have to go into the facility to get to the dining area. But don't, we, don't we allow that oh, no, at, actually, at Whole Foods? Yeah, actually most of our other ones have some sort of another gate to it. They aren't, uh, right? Um, well, they, it's kind of an emergency escape, yeah. Uh, I could think of uh, Scotty's on 21st. Um, is that away from the building? It's next to the building, but you have to come out of the restaurant and then enter into the area where you're, you know, consuming. Yeah, the there, are, there are a number of them like that. Okay. This is the only one that there's a five foot separation, but other than that, there's really not much difference. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Okay. So do we have a motion and a second? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call. Gotta be quicker. Yes, you do. <laughs> President Byrne. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Marquart. Trustee Marquart. Yeah, bandwidth issues. Aye. No. Trustee yeah. Takaoka. Aye. Trustee Cook. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Who's David Sloan? What's that? Oh, there's Mr. Sloan. He's on mute. Hi. Thanks, guys, for approving. We've just been uh, really busy with Cinco de Mayo. So I had to run out to the store. We're running out of food. That's great. Happy That's Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Glad Are you still here. open? <laughs> yeah, we're still open. We're still serving. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Uh, would no further uh, business to come before the committee to hold their motion to adjourn? So made. Okay, second. we got a first and a second. Those in favor indicate by aye. 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 Is there any nays? The ayes have it. The committee to hold is adjourned. Thank you. Be safe out there. Yeah. Good, good night, night very much. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.